Hello everyone, I'm Just the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to tell you guys how to make a knight in Oblivion. Now if you have played Kingdom Come Deliverance you may see some of these skills as a familiarity, you know. They're kind of familiar in the way that I kind of classify a knight in Oblivion and let's get started. And I want you to start with your sign. The sign is quite an interesting one. It is the lady for your 10 plus willpower and 10 plus endurance. I'm not really worried about the skills, it's more of the attributes and the reason why is a knight, yeah, they're supposed to be strong, but they're more supposed to be, like, hardy. And the willpower is because knights were hyper-religious back in the day. So that kind of simulates, in Oblivion, the hyper-religiosity that your knight will have. Now, when you make a custom class, you want your focus to be on the combat focus, because a lot of the skills are just going to be combat focused. And a knight was most known for the combat, even though they also you know, kind of delved into religion, but then was dealt with religious combat. So then for your two attributes, we'll also do willpower and endurance. For your skills, you will get blade, armorer, heavy armor, block, marksman, restoration, and alteration. Now, pretty much this seems almost like a paladin, which is exactly like, I think if I could take this paladin um, and make it a paladin, I would switch the marksmanship with Probably alchemy, to be honest with you, because alchemy seems like more of a paladin thing to make healing potions. But, as you guys, some of you may know, a knight both specialized in sword play and marksmanship. Now, knights also used maces, so if you would prefer to use, you know, blunt, you know, you could do that. But knights, of course, you know, they wore heavy armor to guard from arrows. They used shields because, well, swords sometimes just weren't enough to block stuff. Now, restoration and alteration, for me... Of, you know, the six magic classes of the alchemy of this, or I guess you could include alchemy in this. Of the seven magical skills, I think that restoration and alteration kind of can do the least amount of damage and the most positive effects for humanity, as well as cause the least amount of mischief. So if you pick conjuration... It's obviously like summoning undead and hell creatures. It's not something a religious person would do. If you picked mysticism, well, that's kind of like witchcraft, you know, and the manipulation of objects. And illusion is the manipulation of people, which knights, I guess you could say they did do that, but not, I don't think to the extent of like a bard or a thief would, or even a diplomat or an envoy. And destruction is burning things. Knights did rape and pillage and do all of that, but I don't think they did enough to justify not picking alteration or restoration. So, when you're actually playing this character, you have a lot of combat options, all right? You're, um, basically, this character is give yourself all the buffs and attack the situation from any way you want. You can use archery or you can use sword play. You know, not a lot of magic is involved, so if you really like magic, don't pick a knight, but you have those passive, you know, the alteration, like the shields and the weight buffs, along with healing yourself and buffing your skills. So those will help in the creation of like a super powered knight. This is almost like a a swordsman kind of person, but we have that marksman skill in there. Make sure while you're using this character that you actually do utilize the marksman skill because it will help you in your sword battles, you know, maybe make the opponent weaker, or if you manage to get some poisons, poison them. You know, just something to help out your sword play. This is very much a sword-focused character with restoration and alteration helping you in sword play, you know, because you have the protect spells and the, and the protection of magic, along with the swordsmanship and blocking for sword play. And the archery is just there more as a let's do damage and now swap to swords. That's how you would play this character. So... You know, if you have any questions about the knight, go ahead and ask me in the comments below. I know this is a simple, simple-seeming character. This character is actually very good for new people if you're a noob at the game, but you kind of understand it a little more than the average person. This one kind of gets more into the magic, less into the physical, like talking and making potions. You know, more into magic and nuance things a little more. This combines things. You're not just coming at someone with a sword. You're tactically coming at someone with a sword and using your own abilities along with, I guess you could say, the environment if you use the archery enough to 
enhance your swordplay. So let me know what you think of this character in the comments below. You can subscribe if you're new for more Oblivion tutorials. I know I haven't, I haven't been making a lot of these. I want to try to make more because I really like Oblivion and I really like the tutorial aspect of it. So thank you guys for watching. Um, you can uh, All the subscription stuff. I will see you guys in the next episode of Stream Vlog, Steam it Post of whatever I decide to make.